In this view, we will be demonstrating the cross table lateral cervical spine using a horizontal beam. The cross table lateral cervical spine should be performed with the patient lying on the table. Using a horizontal beam with a 72 inch source to image distance and no tube angulation. In this scenario, our patient has been brought in by the EMS. We're going to demonstrate a portable cervical spine. She's on a backboard and she has a cervical collar on and those items need to remain there until the radiographs are obtained. We have her at 72 inch distance. The portable machine has been brought in and we are centered at C4 in the mid coronal plane. So with a cervical collar, you want to ensure that there is no artifacts, make sure that there is no earrings or necklaces. The IR is a grid covered IR. We have it taped as close to the backboard as possible. We have relaxed her shoulders. I've indicated the left side of the body with a left marker. She is shielded. She's going to remain very still. And the exposure is taken. A diagnostic cross-table cervical spine radiograph must be free of motion and rotation. Demonstrated anatomy to include the upper cervical vertebrae, superimposed lamina of the axis and posterior arch of the atlas, with proper visualization of soft tissue and bony detail. In this view, we will be demonstrating the lateral flexion cervical spine. The lateral flexion cervical spine should be performed with the patient standing or seated at the upright bucky, a 72 inch source to image distance and no tube angulation. For flexion and extension of the cervical spine, our patient is still at the upright um, bucky. We, our tube is still set at 72 SID and it is perpendicular. We are centered at C4. For flexion, I'm gonna have the patient bring her chin down towards her chest. And when we do this, this opens up the spinous processes and the spaces in the back. Flexion and extension is to show mobility and movement of the cervical spine. So for flexion, we're gonna have the patient bring her chin down towards her chest and the exposure is taken. A diagnostic lateral flexion cervical spine radiograph must be free of motion and rotation. Demonstrated anatomy to include the body of the mandible, almost vertical. Spinous processes in profile elevated and widely separated, with proper visualization of soft tissue and bony detail. In this view, we will be demonstrating the lateral extension cervical spine. The lateral extension cervical spine should be performed with the patient standing or seated at the upright bucky, a 72 inch source to image distance and no tube angulation. When we lift the chin all the way up for extension, it closes those spaces. For extension, she's gonna raise her chin to the ceiling and that will close those spaces. A diagnostic lateral extension cervical spine radiograph must be free of motion and rotation. Demonstrated anatomy to include the body of the mandible will be almost horizontal. Seven spinous processes are in profile, depressed and closely spaced with proper visualization of soft tissue and bony detail. In this view, we will be demonstrating the lateral cervical thoracic spine or swimmer's view. The lateral swimmer's cervical thoracic spine should be performed with the patient standing at the upright bucky or lying on the table. A 40 inch source to image distance and if needed, a three to five degree caudate tube angulation, depending on the patient's ability to depress the shoulder. For a cervical spine, if you are not able to get all seven cervical 
vertebrae, then a swimmer's view might be necessary. This will show the cervical thoracic area. The patient will take her right arm and extend it up over her head, and the left arm goes behind her, almost like a swim stroke. This is taking and offsetting the shoulders that were superimposed before. We're actually gonna lower our central ray to C7 and get more of the cervical thoracic area in hopes to get more of that C7. So if the patient is unable to depress their shoulder, a three to five cotted angle may be needed. A diagnostic lateral cervicothoracic spine or swimmer's view must be free of motion and rotation with adequate penetration through the shoulder region. Demonstrated anatomy to include the lower cervical and upper thoracic vertebrae with proper visualization of soft tissue and bony detail. If you enjoyed this video, I encourage you to visit CloverLearning.com and explore our robust selection of video-based courses, certification exam prep question banks, and continuing education resources. Lastly, please remember to hit the like button, subscribe, and turn on notifications so you can stay up to date on our latest videos.